Hello, welcome to a new YouTube video and Happy New Year. Today I'm showing a journal video, which is part of the wonderful Junk Journal January Challenge that Meg Journals has set up. It's a junk journal challenge for the whole month, and to celebrate the start of it, Meg has organised a YouTube collab. So there are 8 of us in total, and we'll each be sharing our favourite journal techniques, and there'll be a playlist linked in the description below so you can find all of the videos really easily. So I'm sharing one of my favourite junk journaling techniques, which is to use paint to create a texture in my journal. I often find that the blank page is really daunting, and so I like to place some paint down first just to get started. And this technique is the perfect way to add more interest, and all you need is a sturdy piece of card. I'm using one of those fake cards that come in junk mail, but you can also use an old gift card or even just a thick bit of cardboard. I'm also using acrylic paint and then just smearing the paint around the page. This technique means you don't see any brush strokes and although it can take a little bit longer to dry, I really love the effect that it gives. So you can see I'm just sort of smearing it on the page here. I just mixed up some colour on that piece of greaseproof paper and that was a mix of green, white and a little bit of red. So by smearing it on the page, it means that I don't have much control over the paint and also where I haven't completely mixed in the colour like really smoothly, you can see little bits of the white and green in places. It's quite messy so I end up getting paint all over my hands, but at this point I don't really love the green shade so I just add some white straight to the page and just smear that on. It creates a real like visual interest on the page and I really love this for a base on my pages. I don't have a plan for today's journaling so I'm just sort of using this as a base to jump off from because it's a lot less scary than just having a blank page. So I've let that dry now and I've brought in this music page. This I think is just a wallpaper sample uh, that I've torn up and that was the starting off point for my colour as well. I didn't match that perfectly but that's where I got the idea of doing the green first and I just pulled that out of my journaling stash. I'm just using Fritz Stick to glue my things onto the page for this spread and adding that to the right hand page. So now that's stuck down I want to add a bit more collage onto that page and use another piece of music sheet which is actually from a book and add that onto the bottom left hand corner of the of the right hand page. I also try a little bit of brown paper and I'm just playing around here just to add some interest and add a bit more of background elements to the whole spread. I really like using brown paper and the warmth that it gives and at this point I'm just ripping it up and making different shapes and just gluing them where I think they work. I often gravitate to putting them to the bottom of the page just because I feel like it creates a nice anchor but as with most of my journaling sometimes I cover up quite a lot of it but that's just the way that the layout works and that's just the way my process goes. So to try and pair back the contrast that the music sheet was giving on the right hand page I'm just going in with some more white paint and again with the card technique and smushing that all over the page. I like to have a bit peeking through and you can see it worked really well on the brown paper because it gives such a nice contrast with the white and I really like the texture that adds on the bottom left. Then I'm going in with a stamp. I want to use my stamps a lot more and I really like the subtle texture this adds as well and I'm just adding that in various places around the page. The first prompt for Junk Journal January is New Beginnings and so I use this which is a blank calendar and I thought that was perfect for the 1st of January and I'm just dotting that around. I also add on that stamp which works really nicely to tie in with the brown paper on the left and I've brought in a few other bits from my stash for ideas of what I'm going to add. Like I said I didn't have a set plan for this page so I've just brought in things that I found in my big box of journaling supplies that caught my eye and I'll see how they work later. I really like the colours of this vintage postcard, it's just a really nice like old style illustration and I like to have space 
extra space for my journaling so I add that in as a little flap and I just use this pink washi tape to secure it down. Then I'm using these wooden block stamps which I bought from Hobbycraft years and years ago and don't often use. So like I said I want to use more stamps in my journals this year so I'm just going in and adding these for the prompt title. I want this to be quite subtle so I'm using this sepia toned ink and just adding it to the top left. I wasn't sure if it was going to be too subtle and obviously because it's ink over acrylic it's not super clean so this technique doesn't really work over the acrylic paint if you do want that sort of look but I really love the texture and I'm obviously going for quite a grungy look here so it worked really well. And I just split that up because the letters are quite large um, so like the word isn't on its own line and I really like the way that looks too. I think looking back on the final layout I know that this kind of is a bit in an odd place and I hadn't really worked my layout or thought what I was doing in advance but it gives me a nice base and I knew I wanted to write that on there so I just end up working around that for the final layout. I add on some more vintage ephemera on the bottom left which is from an old book and I thought it would be nice to use this page flag that says make it count because it's the new year but I think that the warm tones of the spread doesn't work with the grey. So instead I bring in this little label tag and I like that as an extra layer. I like to layer up my like elements so you can see it's like it's going under the postcard but over the stamp and I'll leave that there for now until I decide how to stick that in. I have this brown paper which I painted on a little rainbow from some paint that I wasn't using and I thought that that would just be nice to tie in the brown paper and it's nice to have a painted element. And here's another one of the elements which I brought from my stash and this is just an old book with some photos on and I'm cutting one of those out. It doesn't really have much to do with the prompt but I like the idea of the sunrise going with the rainbow and the whole idea that it's like a new start and a new beginning so I think I can tie that in even though I don't really mind if it doesn't make any sense mostly I'm just looking for like I just mostly want the thing to work with the aesthetic of the journal page rather than the elements making sense so when I go to glue this in and this often happens with the things that I stick in I find something on the back and I was contemplating having it this way around but I decided that it worked better with the landscape image and it's a much clearer photo as well. So I just stick that in with the Brit stick and then I work with the extra little rainbow and see where that fits as well. So I just pop that over the top and then tie in the washi tape from the right hand page and bring that over as if it's sticking in the photo even though obviously I've glued that down and I did contemplate using that little strip of white as well but I just popped that onto the bottom left because I thought it worked well. At this point I was overthinking a little bit and wasn't really sure how to continue with the page. Often I work really instinctively but I definitely was overthinking this one so there was a lot of back and forth with a lot of collage elements. To keep it simple with the little tag on the right I use that navy washi tape just to add some contrast and then I add on this greaseproof paper so this is just like a baking um, paper which I had in my craft room and I just add that on just because it softens the colour a bit and again it adds more texture to the page. I'm just trimming that to size and then because I like to use all the spare little elements and I'm not very good at just throwing stuff away, I then use the scrap which I cut off from the tag on the bottom left and I really like that again it just adds an extra layer and more texture as well. So it looked a little bit empty on the top left, like I said I didn't plan on putting the title there but that's where it ended up and again I turn this over and see that I would painted on some pink paint there just with my leftover paint. I often create too much paint and so I don't like just washing away the leftovers so I just end up painting scraps of paper I find in my studio and that's what this was. 
when I turned it over I really liked the pink but I wanted it down the bottom and so I come in with another piece of brown paper to add to the top left like my original plan was and that just ties in the brown paper elements from the right hand page and the left so it just ties it all in and makes it a bit more cohesive. Then I find this scrap of paper which again is for my book and cut out a little bird. I still want something in that top corner to fill the space. The one on the other side was too big but this one was perfect and I really like the way that looks. It feels like it ties in with the sky as well even though it wasn't planned. And then I thought this would be really nice to add a little label. I really like little elements like this and so I just add the name of the bird up there in this little collage cluster. I really like the way that this looks so I cut out another line and it doesn't really make sense again with the rest of the spread but like I said I like the way that it looks so I cut this up and add that to the bottom left hand corner. These bits were quite fiddly to glue on but it's handy with the put stick because it means I can adjust it and it doesn't dry instantly so I can move things around and into place. Then I'm coming in with this roller date stamp and I bought this from the range and this goes up quite far. A lot of my old roller date stamps stop at 2020 so I was happy to find this and I often use this in my project life journaling but I want to add this on again with the sepia ink around the page. I really like the way that it looks when you stamp and then stamp again so it's quite a messy way of stamping but it just adds more interest and I set the date to the 1st of January 2022. I add this on the top left as well and I just leave that as one stamp and add that on to the bottom right just to clear off the ink and add a bit more interest down there. It's very subtle on camera but I like the way that this looks and it just adds more like another visual element to the page. I'm moving the tag in slightly just so that it creates a nicer line down there on the edge. And then I still feel like it's kind of unfinished so I play around with some more of the brown paper element. Looking back I'm not sure this works but it definitely feels like it, it was empty without it. So I just add that to the left hand side. It's quite busy on the bottom left and the top right so it doesn't feel too odd that there's not much there but I definitely think it helps to create a nice edge. And that's it for this journal spread. So you can see underneath the postcard and on the back of the postcard I can add some journaling and I want to write some reflections for 2021 and a few of my resolutions under there as well. Because it's on top of the acrylic paint I'm just going to do that in biro rather than an ink pen so it doesn't smudge but something to think about if you're going to write straight onto the background that we created using the smushy card technique. So I really hope you enjoyed watching and if you do try this technique then I'd love to know how you got on. I really recommend watching all the other ladies who's taking part in this collab and all of their techniques and wonderful journaling videos so the link to the playlist is down below and I'll also pop a link to the junk journal January prompt list which is done by Meg Journals and that will be in the description as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week with a new video. See you later!